The third plenary meeting of the 11th emergency session of the General Assembly is called to order. The Assembly will continue its consideration of Agenda Item 5, entitled Letter Dated 28 February 2014, from the Permanent Representative of Ukraine to the United Nations, addressed to the President of the Security Council. S-2014-136. I now give the floor to Her Excellency Marta Luisa Ramirez, Vice President and Minister of, for Foreign Affairs of Colombia. Señor Presidente, Señor Secretario General, señores delegados, señoras y señores, Colombia ha expresado con claridad su rechazo a los ataques y amenazas sufridos por Ucrania de parte de la Federación de Rusia, así como la promoción deliberada de la separación de las áreas de Donetsk y Luhansk, desconociendo los acuerdos de Minsk del 2014 y contrariando el derecho internacional, así como los principios fundacionales de Naciones Unidas. Lo anterior es una situación de hecho que lesiona gravemente a un país miembro de esta organización, ya que genera la disrupción de su unidad nacional y de su integridad territorial, a la vez que constituye una grave violación a los derechos humanos del pueblo ucraniano. Colombia reitera su solidaridad con la valentía del pueblo ucraniano y de su gobierno, que afrontan esta agresión injustificada y no provocada, causando un sufrimiento humano como no veíamos desde la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Ninguna nación puede permanecer indiferente ante este drama que amenaza ciertamente la paz y la seguridad internacional. La acción unilateral e injustificada de Rusia, la injustificada acción de Rusia, está currently leading to a massive exodus, which will generate a new migratory crisis in the world, seriously threatening the stability and peace both of Europe and of the world. Hundreds of thousands of people, 293 Colombian citizens included, are today, as we speak, suffering. The winter, the, uh, the harsh winter weather for six nights after abandoning their families, their loved ones, their savings, and their projects for the future just to protect their lives uh, from uh, the unrelenting threat of uh, the Russian troops. This has led to a financial panic throughout the world, which has been suffering disproportionate increases in the prices of basic products fuel, and food on the international market. The events against Ukraine have uh, pushed a world inflation and struck uh, once again the supply chain and the economic recovery which all nations in the world uh, need after the loss of millions of lives, millions of jobs, millions of small and medium businesses, as well as the destruction of the the patrimony of uh, millions of families in the world as a consequence of the unending pandemic. As our President Ivan Duque has said, the voice of Colombia joins that of other countries at this uh, meeting in a spontaneous fashion because we are truly convinced of the principles we are defending here today. The situation we are experiencing is extremely serious. We cannot remain in unmoved and silent uh, in this situation. We are here with a genuine commitment to world peace without opportunism because of the situation and aware of the immense gravity of the violations taking place and the terrible precedent they are setting for the future of humanity itself if they were to continue without the severe consequences for the aggressor, whoever they may be. The legal consequences of the Ukraine invasion are clear in the light of the current regime of international state responsibility adopted by the Convention of International Law 20 years ago. Russia must be held internationally accountable 
for the humanitarian, economic, legal, and other consequences of the uh, illegal international actions it has undertaken. Its attack on the youth cogents or, inter or uh, current international law, which, uh, which is that uh, no state must be uh, subject to the threat or use of force against its uh, territory, integrity, and unity. All the states represented here are obliged to comply with the following uh, duties, the positive obligation of cooperation to put an end through all legal means possible to severe violations of use cogents committed by Russia. We must respond to the negative duty as well of not recognizing a de facto solution imposed by violence through grave violations of international law, nor provide assistance, nor facilitate uh, the continuation of the situation with all of its implications. For the aforementioned reasons, Mr. President, Colombia has uh, submitted, uh, has uh, co-sponsored uh, the resolution uh, before the General Assembly. Colombia believes that this as assembly should be the birthplace of conclusive drafts, and it, uh, it is uh, appropriate uh, to recommend to all member states to impose economic sanctions as long as there is an aggressor as a means of pressuring the immediate suspension of offenses against international law. This morning we have heard that dozens of Ukrainian children were killed. How many more timid, gradual sanctions have already shown themselves to be a miserable failure in some uh, countries? In some Latin American countries, they have become an increasing violation of human rights despite uh, these uh, uh, weak sanctions, the restriction of more political freedoms and the suppression of freedom of expression, because when there are totalitarian regimes, they need a truly strong reaction against them. Those who are not democratically elected by their citizens already know how they can manage sanctions or half measure sanctions. Another measure we should consider is all existing mechanisms to meet commitments uh, for disarmament uh, of nuclear weapon states. Colombia is currently chairing in Geneva the disarmament convention headed by our ambassador Alicia Arango. This should be dealt with in that forum in an urgent fashion, as our president has said, because of the recent measures Russia announced. We applaud the decision of, the, of Karim Khan, prosecutor in the International Criminal Court, of initiating an investigation on possible war crimes, ac crimes against humanity, or possible gen genocide, which may have been committed in the territory of Ukraine. Those responsible for these crimes must be individually tried by the ICC and held accountable for their actions before the international community. All states who are members of the Rome Statute must follow up on that. Today, as in 1950, we must remain united for peace. This is the main raison d'etre and the main responsibility of the United Nations system and the Security Council. The Russian nation, for decades, has contributed in many ways to the development of humanity and also to progress and the building of the structure of international law since the peace con uh, conference in The Hague, the drafting of the Charter of the United Nations, and the Helsinki Accords. And this is a contribution that all of us must acknowledge. Unfortunately, however, a good part of the actions condemned in the Helsinki Declaration are today being committed by Russia as the main uh, protagonist and the main actor. It is still time for the Russian Federation, which presided the Security Council until yesterday, and should therefore guarantee compliance with the Charter and with international law to return to the path of compliance with standards and promotion uh, of them, uh, particularly through confidence-building measures, 
which will make it possible to return to negotiation. Colombia is convinced that dialogue and negotiation are the path to resolving conflicts. However, any negotiation between Russia and the government of Ukraine must take place without any threats to Ukraine and without trying to suppress that spirit of freedom, progress, democracy, and respect for human rights, which we recognize in Ukraine and which we should all try to support. We should try to support any dialogue as long as it leads to immediate cessation of special military operations by Russia. This process of the support of the security uh, of the Secretary General, the OSCE, and other international organizations and regional organizations should achieve the immediate de-escalation of this conflict, uh, in which all of humanity is a loser. It should prevent an aggression and a threat of mass destruction, which I reiterate, we cannot allow to break that will of uh, freedom, sovereignty, and independence, which the people of Ukraine have expressed at different points in history and more recently in 2014. It would be unacceptable under the current circumstances with a pandemic which has not yet come to an end for the world to return to an arms race, leaving behind the development agenda. Quite the contrary. We must continue for the good of uh, humanity with the climate change agenda, gender equity, energy transition, the fight against poverty, the p fight against hunger, and all of the sustainable development goals, while also sending a clear message that all free nations of the world do not accept threats from any country to the sovereignty of any member of this organization. The Russian Federation cannot uh, uh, save time or turn the clock back in time uh, to a period when um, great empires flourish at the cost of other peoples. Uh, the world would not accept such a return to the past. Thank you very much, sir. I thank the Vice President and Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Colombia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Paraguay. Señor Presidente, señor President, uh, Secretary General, Vice President of Colombia, Your Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, Paraguay supports uh, the convening of this special emergency meeting of the General Assembly, as it is the most democratic and plural body of our world organization. It is being held under the resolution United for Peace since the calls that we have been making and repeating as a majority of countries and the main world leaders have constantly been making have not been enough to stop what we so greatly feared. Unfortunately, for reasons we are all aware of, the Security Council was unable to make progress in its attempts to prevent the escalation of this conflict, which once again reaffirms the urgent need for it to be reformed. Since then, the situation has only worsened, including with the threat of the use of nuclear weapons. In this regard, we agree with the Secretary General and we support uh, the previous speakers on the point that there is no justification whatsoever for the use of nuclear weapons or as and it, they should not be used as a means of intimidation either we call together with uh, other member states uh, for nuclear weapon states uh, to comply with their 
uh, obligations under the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, the people of Paraguay have condemned uh, the attack on the people of Paraguay as a violation of national sovereignty, and we have also called for the immediate cessation of facilities and the resumption of dialogue and negotiation in order to achieve a peaceful, mutually acceptable and lasting solution. A dreadful situation Ukraine is experiencing today also jeopardizes the legal order we created 76 years ago in uh, the, at the San Francisco conference uh, against the threat or use of force to resolve an international dispute, seeking to enshrine international law as a sole guarantor for all member states of this organization. For these uh, reasons, we, uh, the countries who are desirous of peace, uh, wish uh, for uh, a call for an immediate cessation of violence, and we must be heard. This is why today we have decided to sponsor and vote for the draft resolution, which was submitted to the consideration of the General Assembly, as we did last Friday, with the draft resolution presented to the Security Council. The Security Council must play its role and exercise its functions. We hope that the series of mechanisms it has, and which we heard in the statements of its members uh, yesterday, can be urgently activated and begin to produce results to reestablish peace and security. Above all, and most urgently, to uh, relieve the pain and suffering of all those affected. In this regard, we highlight the meeting held yesterday at the request uh, of the delegations of France and Mexico to assess the humanitarian situation in the field and determine the needs. We also join the call for all parties to facilitate the arrival of humanitarian assistance and humanitarian personnel and to urgently respond to the needs of all those in vulnerable situations, particularly women and children. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Paraguay, as a member of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations, called uh, strongly in Geneva for the respect of peace and the fundamental rights of all those affected by the conflict in Ukraine. As appropriately pointed out by the foreign minister at the higher level uh, segment of the council, I, and I quote, we are in a time of confusion as we see the scourge of war and where human rights violations have become an undesirable and deplorable part of the budget. This is why we call for an urgent meeting on the situation in Ukraine to uh, deal with this crisis from the comprehensive viewpoint of human rights, where the right to life is the most uh, precious right that needs to be protected. Mr. President, colleagues, there is also an imperative need to quickly return to the negotiation process in a constructive, flexible fashion on the basis of uh, current international mechanisms uh, in strict adherence to international law, the principles of the Charter of the United Nations, Resolution 2202, as, which is of a compulsory nature under Article 25 of the Charter, including the respect for the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of states. This is a clear, direct call we have been making since the very first day in our statements. This is the only path open. Now, see, we hope uh, that the, con the talks which began yesterday morning will be the beginning of emerging from this crisis in a sustainable, lasting fashion, reiterating the need to reach an immediate ceasefire in order for these talks to continue without any preconditions. 
Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Paraguay. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Dominican Republic. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, we are grateful for the speed uh, with which your president responded uh, by convening this emergency situation to deal with the situation created by the military occupation of uh, Russia in Ukrainian territory, which is also a full member of this organization. We acknowledge the efforts of the Secretary General and His Excellency and Your Excellency in order to bring uh, dialogue and cooperation back to the table at this difficult uh, period for humanity. As expressed by the President of the Dominican Republic, Luis Sabinader, and I quote, our country is shaken by the military invasion uh, of Russia against the people of Ukraine. The Russian Federation, with this decision, is violating the Charter of the United Nations, the Minsk Agreements, and the Budapest Memorandum, as well as uh, countless resolutions of the Security Council and of this very General Assembly. With this action, they are violating core principles of international law, such as the respect for the territorial integrity of states, the commitment to resolve uh, disputes uh, through peaceful means, and to refrain uh, from the threat or use of force, as well as respect for political independence and non-interference in the internal affairs of other states. Mr. President, the Dominican Republic, a staunch believer in a peaceful coexistence between peoples, a defender of an international legal framework which guarantees fundamental rights, uh, speaks out by co-sponsoring this resolution and voting for it uh, the resolution aggression against uh, Ukraine will be presented at the special emergency session. And we reiterate our call to lay down arms urgently and uh, to give uh, priority to diplomatic negotiation. After this terrible pandemic, what uh, this world is solidarity and peace. We do not want any further deaths and grief. Hundreds of people have been killed, and the humanitarian and economic uh, consequences are unpredictable. President, colleagues, as representatives to this organization, all of our countries, big and small, have the responsibility and the duty to respect the Charter of the United Nations. In the case of my country, the Dominican Republic, these values are non-negotiable. As a founding member of these United Nations, we will continue holding high the democratic principles that brought us all to San Francisco in June of 1945. We deplore that today we are discussing this painful topic, and we call on all delegations to firmly and decidedly support the desire and the wish of Ukraine and of all countries of the world to live in peace. Today, humanity is waiting for us. Let us not fail. I thank the distinguished representative of Dominican Republic. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Suriname. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Mr. Secretary General, colleagues, the Republic of Suriname has taken note with great concern of the Russian invasion in Ukraine and strongly condemns this military intervention. Suriname supports the principles of international law as enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations and underscores the independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine. The Russian invasion of a sovereign and independent state cannot be accepted and, and any on, under any circumstances and must stop immediately. This invasion will have far-reaching consequences for the people of Ukraine and it is a serious threat to peace and security, both in the region and the world. Mr. President, in this regard, the government of the Republic of Suriname would like to reiterate its principled position with respect to the following. Peaceful coexistence, the re-establishment of dialogue in every existing conflict, regardless of its nature, the upholding of the internationally agreed principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of states, non-intervention, and respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. In light of the above, Suriname urges all parties involved to engage responsibly and practice restraint in order to prevent destabilization of the region. Mr. President, there are no winners in any war. War brings only human suffering and devastation. Suriname expresses its concern about the humanitarian situation in Ukraine and calls upon all parties to allow and facilitate the safe and unrestrained access of humanitarian assistance to those in need, to protect civilians, including those who are humanitarian personnel and persons in vulnerable situations. Suriname welcomes the actions undertaken by the Secretary General and the, and the United Nations in this regard and supports the Secretary General's call to end the war. Mr. President, the Republic of Suriname maintains diplomatic relations with both Russia and Ukraine and shall continue to call for processes of dialogue and diplomacy which are essential elements that contribute to maintaining peace, stability, and security. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Suriname. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Brunei Darussalam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Brunei Darussalam expresses concern over the escalation of tensions and military actions in Ukraine and continues to closely monitor developments in the country. Brunei Darussalam condemns any violation of sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of any country and reiterates the importance of upholding the principle of rule-based framework and respect of it for international law. Finally, Brunei Darussalam calls on all parties directly involved to de-escalate tensions and refrain from acts that may aggravate the situation further and settle all differences by peaceful means without resorting to the threat or use of force in accordance with the UN Charter and international law in the interest of maintaining international peace and stability. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative Brunei Darussalam. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Palau.
Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Palau aligns itself with the statement made by Fiji in its capacity as chair of the Pacific Island Forum. We additionally make the following statement in our national capacity. Ukraine and Palau have little in common. One is a large post-Soviet state in Eastern Europe, and the other is a small blue ocean state, an archipelago of tropical islands in the Pacific. Yet we feel a certain kinship with Ukraine because we could be considered close siblings in the birth of nations. Ukraine became independent most recently in 1991 and Palau shortly thereafter in 1994. And it hasn't escaped us that if the turns of fate had had one of our former colonizers act with the aggression of Russia towards us, that it would have been our people who are suffering the atrocities of war that's happening in Ukraine today that it might have been my own five-year-old that was killed in the kin in kindergarten that was bombed, that it might have been a Palauan grandfather who fled his home with nothing except the belongings on his back, that it might have been a Palauan woman who would have been forced on what should have been one of the most joyous days of a woman's life to give birth in a bomb shelter against the booming noise of the missile strikes in the background, or finally, that it might have been hundreds of our civilians who would have been killed in their homes all in pursuit of Putin's self-proclaimed principle of historical unity. As we look around the room, few of us are immune to historical unity as a justification of war. In fact, our colorful histories are often the basis for the woven identities of many of us. How many of us are former colonies and or lived under a foreign rule at one time or another? How many languages are spoken in our countries? And so on. Our historical past is part of the beauty of our fabric as an integrated world, not a perverse excuse to wage an unprovoked war on our neighbors. In this spirit, Palau asks for your vote in favor of today's resolution to condemn Russia and its use of force against Ukraine. Call your capitals. Make the case that we must defend the UN Charter. We cannot stand by as Russia looks to dismantle the rules-based world order in pursuit of its own self-interest. The German Lutheran pastor Martin Niemöller wrote the following while reflecting on the danger of inaction in World War II. First they came for the socialists, and I didn't speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Ukraine, Palau stands with you. We will continue to speak out and fight for the principles of the UN Charter, human rights, and international law. We, we will continue to oppose the inhumanity wrought by unjust illegal warfare. We call on all member states to join us. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Palau. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Antigua and Barbuda. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, colleagues, I stand before you as a representative of the government of Antigua and Barbuda, and we stand in solidarity with the government and people of Ukraine. We're troubled by the invasion of Ukraine, and we ask our colleagues member of this body, the Russian Federation, to cease the war and withdraw from the territory of Ukraine. Mr. President, on February 8th, three weeks ago, the Foreign Minister of Antigua and Barbuda noted, and I quote, as a small country to which sovereignty, territorial integrity, self 
determination are vitally important. Antigua and Barbuda are anxious that these principles must be respected and be upheld everywhere. Mr. President, when these principles are threatened anywhere, our people, the global community, has an obligation to all countries, big or small, powerful or powerless, to speak out and stand up, lest our silence be misconstrued as consent. We recognize that the powerful country of Russia has security gains over Ukraine. But, Mr. President, such concerns do not justify any attempt at all to use force and to invade against the country of Ukraine and its people, it's, it, and to cripple its sovereignty. Antigua and Barbuda believes in international peace and security and adherence to international law by all countries. That's what we stood for. This is central to our own security as a small island state. We will not condone any, any act or the force of in, invasion. We will not condone the, violent, the violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of any country. Therefore, Mr. President, we reject in the strongest way possible the use of force that is currently being waged upon the independence and sovereignty of the country of Ukraine. We ask our friends again to stop and, re and remove all troops from the territory of Ukraine. Our small nation also recognizes that the conflict in Ukraine plunges our world further into a grave uncertainty with consequential impacts on our entire global community, which is only now recovering from the effects of the pandemic. The, con the, con the conflict in Ukraine has derailed the discussion and the recent report of the IPPCC and takes away much effort that is needed to deal with the issues of climate change. Mr. President, in the recovery from the pandemic, small states like mine have seen, according to UNTAD's report, essential goods increase on an average of about 7.5%. This crisis only exacerbates the situation in these island nations. This situation must stop, Mr. President. The crisis for, is, this is a crisis for all of us and we all must speak out for diplomacy. We all must support this resolution. It means as much to the small states as the big states. My government fully supports the efforts of the Secretary General, and we urge Russia, the Russian Federation, to retain, return to the table and choose diplomacy over confrontation. We, as a small state, would have hoped that Na the nations of the world had placed conflict before confrontation and that this was, be was behind us. We hoped that the use of force to coerce so a sovereign nation was a thing of the past. We hoped, Mr. President, that all countries of the world had, had matured enough to accept consultation over confrontation and negotiations over provocation. We regret, colleagues, that our friends in Russia have chosen either, or they are either unable or unwilling to follow the United Nations Charter and the principles of this charter to which they were a party. We ask that this war be ceased and stopped. Mr. President, we were very disappointed with the use of the veto in, uh, in which we trusted and enshrined in uh, the P5. This General Assembly must stand up to show that the use of the veto must not be used selfishly, that us 
agreeing and supporting this resolution calls for a change in the way the veto is used. Mr. President, we have heard that the East and the West argument, this is not an East and West argument. This is a pivotal moment for the United Nations. And if we stand up and show solidarity together, we will change the, for, the vision that the East can do one thing or the West can do one thing. And whenever this occurs again, and we hope never, we will stand up against it. Mr. President, Antigua and Barbuda fully supports the resolution that is before the House. And we call on all members, especially small island states, to recognize that this is protecting the principles of the Charter. Might is not right. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Antigua and Barbuda. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ghana. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, colleagues, let me begin by first of all thanking the respective leadership of the President of the General Assembly and the Secretary General for convening this emergency special session of the General Assembly to consider the grave threat to international peace and security as a result of the Russian Federation's aggression against Ukraine, a member of this organization. We have met here under the shadows of the dark clouds of war in Europe, which test the resolve of our diplomacy and our collective ability to turn the instruments of war into pillars of peace. The situation we are faced with in Ukraine is grave, and we all must acknowledge that. The foundations of trust that have made the Charter of the United Nations the indispensable instrument of the international order have been assailed in a reckless manner. In action on our part in roundly condemning the actions of the Russian Federation and reaffirming our support for the charter of our organization and its collective security mechanism would further undermine the pillars that have held our world together, regardless of its imperfection. Indeed, across this hall, and throughout our organization's history, there's enough blame to go around. When it has suited powerful states, the charter has been thrown out of the window, and unilateral actions have been taken without due regard. However, when old wounds are opened, it will bleed just as fresh wounds. It is in this regard and conscious that there's never enough blame to make us stand neutral to the cause of peace and the preservation of our United Nations, that we deem it our duty to make all efforts for peace. The Charter is our beacon of hope, and where states sail off the turbulent waters of war and destruction, we must point them back to the lighthouse of peace. Mr. President, as I said in the Security Council on Sunday afternoon, after the adoption of the resolution for this emergency special session of the General Assembly, it is important that we come into this debate with sobriety. This is not just our obligation to the present generation and the civilization we have fashioned for our contemporary world. It is the debt and respect we owe to all those whose blood and toil speak to us from the many graves of the two world wars. We must mean it when we say, never again in our lifetimes and in succeeding generations should the world be put through the scourge of war. The Security Council was constrained from acting, 
And it is now our responsibility as an assembly to act, and act we must. We should therefore support the call for peace. From this hall, the Russian Federation must hear our call for an immediate ceasefire, a withdrawal of its troops from Ukraine, and a recommitment to diplomacy and dialogue. The parties to the conflict must respect the principles of international law, international humanitarian law, and human rights law. The interests of civilian populations must be placed above all else and humanitarian agencies must be granted safe corridors to assist those most in need, especially children, women, and the aged. In this regard, I know the dire situation of 90 Ghanaian students and others in Sumi, Ukraine, and urge a humanitarian pause for them and others in similar situations to leave Ukraine with the support of the UN agencies and the International Federation of the Red Cross. Like many others in this organization, Ghana enjoys long-standing relations of friendship with the Russian Federation. But we have been forthright in our condemnation. It takes true friendship to be candid with one another on matters of principles and values, to expect behavior that greatness requires. The Russian Federation may well have had its security concerns, but it chose to express its concern in the wrong way. Threatening the use of force is wrong and unacceptable. Threatening aggression is wrong and unacceptable. And attacking a neighbor under pretext is wrong and unacceptable. The path of war is not the way one should establish its national positions, and it is not an option this assembly can accept. In condemning the aggression of the Russian Federation, however, we should not close off the path of dialogue. Ours is the vocation of peace. We must therefore recommit ourselves to dialogue to ensure that this war is ended and as soon as possible. We are horrified by the brutal attacks in Ukraine, regret the many innocent lives that have been lost, and are pained by the needless loss from a war that was not necessary. We therefore call on Ukraine, the Russian Federation, and all other parties to give an opportunity for the dialogue that since yesterday commenced at the borders of Belarus, without compromising Ukraine's inalienable rights as a sovereign and independent nation. For Ghana, there is no doubt that our commitment to Ukraine is total in the preservation of its sovereignty, political independence, and territorial integrity. We hope that the adoption of this resolution will make all parties to understand that there's no option other than dialogue in addressing the critical situation we are confronted with in Ukraine. Let us therefore say our bit in this hall, but also deeply reflect on how outside of this hall in our own capitals and in other capitals we can recommit the parties to dialogue and diplomacy to avert the catastrophe of war. We have a responsibility to act as a purveyors of peace and that time is now. I thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Ghana. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Federated States of Micronesia. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, we align ourselves with the statement delivered by Fiji on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum members. We endorse the efforts of the Secretary General on the situation in Ukraine. I would like to make these few points in my national capacity. The events on the ground in Ukraine have dramatically worsened. In addition to the tensions in the eastern part of Ukraine, we are now seeing a full-fledged invasion of a sovereign nation, an attack from a member of this organization, 
on that of another member. This act is in full contravention to international law and the principles of our UN Charter. This is not a peacekeeping mission, but a war of aggression. It is clear beyond any doubt who is the aggressor and the victim. Mr. President, war has a human face, and there are no winners. It is with horror that we witness children, women, and civilians fall victim to this conflict. We deplore this indiscriminate act. We call for the immediate cessation of hostilities and the immediate withdrawal of Russian forces out of the sovereign territory of Ukraine and its internationally recognized borders, and their immediate return to the barracks. We further call that rapid, safe, and unhindered access to humanitarian assistance and safe passage be provided to the Ukrainian population and others seeking it. Mr. President, Micronesia is a small and peace-loving country. The principles of our nation's constitution, which unites our Micronesian island nation and its people, are closely related to the principles of the United Nations Charter. We are encouraged by the strong expressions and actions of the United Nations particularly those directed at the protection of human rights, as well as under humanitarian law, and the prevention and suppression of armed conflict. We are thus deeply concerned by the abhorrent acts of the Russian Federation. I cannot overstress our determination to stand united with the people of Ukraine. In solidarity, the Federated States of Micronesia, as announced days ago by our president, has severe diplomatic relations with the Russian Federation. Mr. President, diplomatic negotiations are needed in good faith and on equal terms if peace is to have a chance. We urge parties to take the path for peaceful dialogue. We draw inspiration from the strength and resilience of the, of the Ukrainian people in the face of overwhelming forces. Micronesia stands in solidarity with them, and we have co-sponsored and will vote in favor of the draft resolution, Aggression Against Ukraine. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Federated States of Micronesia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Australia. Mr. President, Secretary General, colleagues, but particularly our dear friend, the Ambassador of Ukraine. My government could not have made its position more clear. Australia condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's unprovoked, egregious and completely unjustified aggression against Ukraine. As our Prime Minister has said, there is no pretext. There is no provocation. There is no just cause that Russia is seeking to pursue. These are unilateral hostile actions. Mr. President, the UN Charter, 
It says, we, the peoples of the United Nations, committed to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security. Yet, Russia has chosen war. We strongly reject any assertions or excuses that Russia's actions are motivated by humanitarian concerns. We call Russia's actions for what they are, a brutal invasion and a direct attack on the people of Ukraine. President Putin and the Kremlin have ignored repeated high-level calls to engage in genuine reciprocal dialogue over security concerns. As our foreign minister has said, and I quote, the assertion by President Putin of Russian soldiers acting as peacekeepers is an obscene perversion of the noble and vital role that generations of peacekeepers have played across the world. Russia's actions are deplorable. Russia's actions are reckless and destructive. Russia's actions are a wholesale breach of international law. Mr. President, let's be clear. Russia is violating its obligations under the UN Charter, including, most obviously, to refrain from using force against another state. Australia welcomed the significant efforts that were made by our close partners, including the United States, the EU and NATO, to urge a diplomatic solution. Unfortunately, those efforts have failed for now. But we are determined to continue to work closely within the UN and with responsible nations worldwide to ensure Russia's actions incur both the international condemnation and the high cost that they deserve. We welcome the significant steps taken by our partners, including the US, the UK, the EU, Canada and Japan. We also welcome the increasing number of firm statements and practical offers of support to Ukraine, uh, both in Europe and in our own region of the Indo-Pacific. The Australian Government has announced a range of sanctions that impose real costs on Moscow, reflecting the grave nature of Russia's conduct. Australia has sanctioned more than 350 Russian individuals, including corrupt oligarchs, MPs and military commanders who are facilitating Putin's illegal and violent ambitions. We have sanctioned 13 Belarusian individuals and entities who have aided and abetted Putin's aggression. We're also supporting Ukraine and its people. We're working with NATO and other partners to provide lethal as well as non-lethal military equipment, medical supplies and financial assistance to support the people of Ukraine. At the outset, Australia contributed $3 million to NATO's trust fund for Ukraine to support non-lethal military equipment and medical supplies. Overnight, our Prime Minister announced a further $50 million to support both lethal and non-lethal defensive support for Ukraine working with our partners. In addition, the Prime Minister announced an initial contribution of $25 million to provide uh, humanitarian support to international organisations to help meet essential needs and to provide shelter, food, medical care and water. But this is just our opening contribution. We know that needs will continue to rise and we stand ready to help. We call on all parties to adhere to international human rights and humanitarian law to ensure the protection of civilians. Mr President, Australia has been and will always be a steadfast supporter of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Our thoughts are with Ukraine. The Ukrainians are enduring a terrible invasion. The bombs fall, the shelling continues. The bullets are fired. Special forces from Russia are moving towards Kyiv. And tanks are rolling in all around their borders. We reiterate our call to stop this violation. We seek 
immediate withdrawal of the Russian military. We seek the cessation of this military action. We call for peace, a peace that is not just the absence of law, but that enables the people of Ukraine to live according to their own rules, according to their own sovereignty, and to have their own freedom. As the Secretary General said last week, colleagues, the decisions of the coming days will shape our world and directly affect the lives of millions. Now is the time for us all, the peoples of the United Nations, to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security. Australia will co-sponsor the resolution. Australia will vote yes on the resolution condemning Russia's aggression. Colleagues, now is the time to act to act together. Thank you, colleagues. I thank the distinguished representative of Australia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Guyana. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, the government of Guyana fully aligns itself with the statements issued by the Caribbean community on the 14th and 24th of February, and with the declaration of the Organization of American States of the 25th of February on the situation in Ukraine, and wishes to re-emphasize the following. The government of Guyana is gravely concerned over the recent military intervention by Russia in violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine, and calls for an immediate cessation of hostilities and a return to diplomacy. Guyana deplores the threat or use of force in the conduct of international relations and urges a peaceful resolution of the differences that currently exist in consonance with the rule of international law and the provisions of the United Nations Charter. Mr. President, the current military action in Ukraine is contrary to the principles of respect for territorial integrity, sovereignty, and the non-interference in the internal affairs of another sovereign state. The aggression against Ukraine is a threat to the region and countries everywhere. The government of Guyana therefore supports the efforts of the United Nations Secretary General to bring a speedy resolution to the situation in Ukraine and cease the threat to international peace and security. In this regard, the government of Guyana fully supports the resolution before us. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Guyana. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Jamaica. Mr. President, 
Mr. Secretary General. Thank you for convening this emergency special session of the General Assembly during which we are considering the unfolding situation in Ukraine. Jamaica strongly condemns the military incursion into Ukraine by the Russian Federation. We call for the immediate and complete withdrawal of Russian military forces from the territory of Ukraine. Jamaica considers that the military action by Russia in Ukraine violates the principles enshrined in the UN Charter, both in word and in spirit. It undermines the core principles of respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, the non-interference in the affairs of sovereign states, and the obligation to refrain from the threat or use of force. Jamaica considers that these are non-negotiable obligations to which all of us as member states of this United Nations have subscribed. Mr. President, Russia's actions over the last few days are deemed as seriously egregious and unjustifiable, especially given its position as a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, the very body mandated to maintain international peace and security. By its actions, Russia is in clear violation of its solemn duties and responsibilities as a permanent member of the Security Council and member of the UN family. We therefore call on Russia to cease all acts of aggression and open all channels of diplomacy to resolve this dispute peacefully. The global rules-based multilateral system will be under threat if we do nothing. As a small island state, Jamaica recognizes that the international legal framework and the principles of the UN Charter are designed to provide a safe environment for all nations, regardless of size and stature. We cannot allow this international order to be cast aside and ignored with impunity. Inaction by the global community would be most egregious. We must stand up for right, for law, for peace, and demand the urgent cessation of hostilities in Ukraine and the return to dialogue and diplomacy. As members of the United Nations, we have all committed to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war that has too often brought untold sorrow to mankind. The ongoing incursions in Ukraine are a violation of that sacred promise. Military conflict has grave implications for us all. Jamaica notes with grave concern the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Ukraine and the impact on neighboring countries and call on all parties to ensure that displaced persons, both Ukrainian and non-citizens, and including students and expatriates, are allowed safe and unfettered passage to destinations outside Ukraine if they so desire. In this regard, we welcome the Secretary General's announcement earlier of the measures being undertaken to address these humanitarian concerns. Jamaica reaffirms the view that respect for the principles of international law and the UN Charter remain fundamental to the maintenance of international peace and security. It is only in such an environment that we the peoples can continue to work to address and counter the most pressing challenges that confront the world today and in the future. Mr. President, as small states, we see too clearly the dangers of war. We feel too well the threat of disruption of lives, livelihoods, and economic devastation and stagnation. In that sense, today, we are all Ukraine. We too are fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. In that sense too, today, we are all Ukraine. In the eternal and inspiring words of Bob Marley, therefore, let us get up, stand up, stand up for the rights of all the people of Ukraine, because today, we are all Ukraine. I thank you.
I now I thank the distinguished representative of Jamaica. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Luxembourg. Mr. President, Mr. President, Luxembourg fully endorses the statement made yesterday by the European Union. Please allow me to compliment that statement with some, com some comments in my national capacity. In the face of war, we, the members of the United Nations, should all make our voice heard. The Russian armed forces continue to bomb Ukrainian towns and to break the lives of an increasing number of humans, men, women and children in Ukraine. And at that time, I would like to restate the full solidarity of Luxembourg with the government and people of Ukraine. Like her European partners, Luxembourg condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's aggression against Ukraine. My country resolutely supports the independence, unity, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognised borders in line with the resolutions of the General Assembly. The brutal, unprovoked, unjustified, criminal aggression carried out by the Russian Federation against Ukraine, a founding member of the United Nations, is not just an attack on the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. This aggression also calls into question the very principles of the United Nations, multilateralism and the international order founded on the rule of law and the sovereign equality of states. In the face of such a situ serious situation, what can we do as the United Nations? Because of Russia's veto, the Security Council was not able to take the decisions incumbent upon it to fulfill its main responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. We deplore that. This came at a time when the draft resolution presented last Friday by Albania and the United States had the support of more than 80 member states from around the world. Luxembourg is grateful to the members of the Security Council who voted the day before yesterday in favour of Resolution 2623, therefore allowing this emergency special session of the General Assembly to take place. It is now incumbent upon the General Assembly to fulfil its responsibilities. Luxembourg is a co-sponsor and will vote in favour of the draft resolution entitled Aggression Against Ukraine. This is a strong resolution. It demands that Russia immediately stop using force against Ukraine, that Russia abstain from any threat or illegal use of force against any member of the United Nations, and that it withdraw immediately, completely and unconditionally all of its military forces from Ukraine, from within Ukraine's internationally recognised borders. The resolution also demands the immediate peaceful settlement of the conflict between the Russian Federation and Ukraine via political dialogue, negotiation, mediation and other peaceful means. Colleagues, voting in favour of this resolution means voting to stop the war, voting to uphold the Charter of the United Nations and international law, voting to uphold the rule of law rather than the rule of the strongest. It means voting to save lives, to save the population in Ukraine under attack from Russia. We call on all member states to vote in favour of this draft resolution when it is put to the vote. Mr President, we are at a critical juncture for security and stability in Europe and around the world. As the Secretary General stressed yesterday, nothing can justify the use 
of nuclear weapons. We condemn Belarus's involvement in the aggression targeted at Ukraine, in particular by making its territory available to the Russian armed forces. We demand that Russia and Belarus instantly comply with international law. Crimes should not go unpunished. This is particularly true for war crimes and crimes against humanity. In this respect, Luxembourg welcomes the announcement yesterday by the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court that an investigation will be opened imminently into the situation in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has a considerable impact on the civilian population, in particular the most vulnerable. Older people, women and children are paying a very high price. The violations and attacks on human rights are multiplying. Luxembourg supports the efforts within the Human Rights Council to adopt a resolution setting up an international independent commission of inquiry on Ukraine. We call on Russia to stop targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure, including schools and hospitals. We call on Russia to conform with the provisional measures that were indicated to it today to this effect by the European Court of Human Rights. All possible measures should be taken by the parties to protect civilians, including children, humanitarian personnel and also in civilian infrastructure. International humanitarian law must be respected. Luxembourg expresses its gravest possible concern about the humanitarian situation in Ukraine and the increase in the number of internally displaced persons and refugees. My country joins the European and international solidarity here and has decided to make available to its humanitarian partners immediate aid of 1 million euros. The authorities of Luxembourg are also preparing to host refugees who are fleeing the war in Ukraine. We are playing our full part in the solidarity efforts and we hail the generosity of countries neighbouring Ukraine who are already hosting hundreds of thousands of refugees. That the government of Luxembourg has decided to respond to the request of the Ukrainian authorities and to provide them with rescue equipment and with medicines through the European Civilian Protection Mechanism as well as with equipment to build Ukraine's capacity to defend itself. Luxembourg calls for the restrictive measures adopted by the European Union towards Russia and for measures of support with Ukraine. With our European partners, we will continue to support Ukraine on the basis of respect for human dignity, for freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and the respect for the human rights that we all share. President, colleagues, the fate of Ukraine is our fate. The fate of Ukraine is the fate of the international rules-based order. We hail the courage of the President of Ukraine, of the Ukrainian government and people who are today fighting for universal values that the United Nations was founded on. We also hail the courage of Russian citizens who are showing their opposition to the war despite the repression of which they are targets. Like them, we say to the leaders of the Russian Federation, and I will now switch to the language of Pushkin, to Russian, no to war. Stop this war. Colleagues, today we are all Ukrainians. Ukraine can count on our support. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Luxembourg. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Papua New Guinea.
Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. Papua New Guinea feels the pain and the hurt the people and the government of Ukraine are feeling at this trying hour. And we stand in unity and solidarity with all Ukrainians in their God-given motherland. We welcome today's emergency special session of the General Assembly and express our appreciation to the Security Council members who made it possible today. This should, however, not have been the case had the very Security Council entrusted and mandated under the UN Charter for ensuring global peace and security not failed us to live up to its core responsibilities in the context of Ukraine. We are disappointed that some members of the Council whom we have entrusted our support in good faith for them to uphold the sacrosanct principles of the UN Charter in the Council have failed us. Looking the other way, at a critical moment concerning our member state, peace and security, and also global peace and security is not what we expected of Council members, given that they do not only represent their own delegation's interest in the Security Council. It is time such as this that yet again brings to the fore and underscores the urgency for the long overdue reforms of the veto power and the archaic Security Council that remains a prisoner of its past to the detriment of our collective security as has been regrettably witnessed in Ukraine today. Mr. President, Papua New Guinea as a small developing country depends on the respect for a rules-based international order under international law, including the UN Charter. The importance of upholding this for all countries is fundamental for peaceful coexistence and international relations. No country, respective of the economic, financial, military clout, has any right to coerce others in shape or form. It is in this spirit that Papua New Guinea is deeply concerned by Russian Federation's aggressive attack on the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine. We strongly deplore their actions. This must cease forthwith as it contravenes the UN Charter and international law, particularly in the context of a permanent member of the Security Council, as has been rightly underscored by the Secretary General of the United Nations and many other speakers, delegations. We urge for Russia to withdraw immediately and conditionally from Ukraine. We also encourage both parties to useful peaceful dialogue through diplomacy to resolve their differences. We therefore welcome the efforts underway for dialogue and call for the safety and security guarantees for the peacemakers. Rebuilding trust, confidence, and mutual respect between all concerned parties cannot be at the expense of accountability of actions and actors involved in this conflict. We also urge for safe passage for humanitarian relief workers and suppliers to those in need of such assistance in Ukraine and adjacent countries and convey our gratitude for their selfless work in a perilous environment. We also thank neighboring countries of Ukraine for opening their borders and hearts to receive Ukrainians and others seeking refuge. Mr. President, it is for all this rationale that my country, Papua New Guinea, unreservedly supports the Secretary General for being frank and forthright on this issue. This is the right thing to do. We also fully support and endorse and co-sponsored the General Assembly resolution on Ukraine before us today, just as we also did 
for the Security Council resolution last Friday and welcome the Uniting for Peace Council resolution last Saturday. In closing, Mr. President, we also align ourselves with the remarks, with the statement delivered by Fiji on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum. And I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Papua New Guinea. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Timor Leste. Mr. President, Excellencies, Timor Leste is very concerned with the current situation in Ukraine. As one of the last members who joined the United Nations in the last 20 years, Timor Leste always believed in the standards set by the United Nations Charter that every state should uphold international law, which govern the rule-based rule order respecting territorial integrity and sovereignty of other states. What we have been witnessing in the past few days are actions taken against international humanitarian and human rights law. As this situation has escalated into a full war and has taken a heavy toll on the civilian population. For that very reason, Timor Leste co sponsored the Security Council draft resolution calling for an end to this situation, which ultimately was not adopted by the Council. And now, Mr. President, it is the General Assembly duty to stand up and defend the core foundation of the United Nations. Timor Leste once again reaffirms its commitment to upholding the principle of international law and the UN Charter by co sponsoring and fully supporting the draft resolution of the General Assembly entitled Aggression Against Ukraine. Mr. President, Timor Leste understand the pain and suffering caused by a military attack as we have experienced it ourselves. As a nation that came from the ashes of forced occupation for years, Timor Leste knows that war brings benefit to no one. We therefore urge parties to the conflict to agree to an immediate ceasefire and to pursue a diplomatic solution. While maintaining peace and security has become the most crucial task of this organization, we must protect the civilian population and create conditions for peace. We thank the Secretary General and the all UN agencies and partners for their continued support to the civilian population through its humanitarian uh, operation efforts. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Timor Leste. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mr. President, Excellencies, at the outset, St. Vincent and the Grenadines expresses its deepest condolences to the families of the victims who have lost their lives due to the special military operation launched by the Russian Federation in the independent territory of Ukraine. We continue to monitor the escalation of the conflict and are deeply worried by the deterioration deteriorating situation. From our perspective, the special military operation is neither necessary nor desirable and is an affront to the United Nations Charter. Given the historical context 
of the geopolitical situation in the region and Russia's articulation of its legitimate security concerns and perspective on the political situation in the Donbas region, we acknowledge the need for constructive diplomatic efforts that thoroughly address these concerns. The special military operation, however, cannot reasonably be justified. It, it, it only endangers international peace and security and will exacerbate human suffering across the globe. Let us be clear, no member state of our organization will be immune from the ripple effect of this armed conflict. Mr. President, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is unwaveringly committed to the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter, including those relating to Article 2, subsection 4, which prohibit the threat or use a force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state, as well as non-interference in the internal affairs of states and the right to self-determination. Our existence as a sovereign and independent small nation is owed to these international sacrosanct, sacrosanct norms and non-negotiable timeless principles. Accordingly, we cannot stand askance while the bedrock principles of international law are being jettisoned and call for the immediate cessation of all hostilities. We specifically urge the strict adherence to the principles of sovereignty, political independence, territorial integrity, non-intervention, non-interference, respect for human rights and international humanitarian law. Equally, we reiterate the recent calls made by the Caribbean community, CARICOM, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, for the Pacific settlements of disputes and the respect of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Mr. President, historically, the Russian Federation has been a defender of the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter, inclusive of the sacred principle of the peaceful settlement of disputes. This is emblematic of its membership in the Group of Friends in Defense of the United Nations Charter. As a fellow defender of these principles and member of this group, St. Vincent and the Grenadines unequivocally insists that the Russian Federation cease its military operations and immediately withdraw its forces from Ukraine. On countless occasions, we have witnessed the insidious effects of interventionism and external aggressions across the developing world. And we know that constructive dialogue in adherence to international law is the only path to peace and progress, however difficult that path may be. We deeply regret that the minced agreements have been violated. We also make an appeal for meaningful diplomatic initiatives and encourage the furtherance of the work of the Normandy format, the trilateral contact group, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. We urge the parties to exhaust all diplomatic efforts to find a peaceful solution to the current conflict. We firmly believe that the nobility of peace is far preferable than an ignoble military adventure. History has taught us that peace is a great cause, and great causes have never been won by doubtful men and women. While we are encouraged by the recent meeting that was held on the Belarusian border between both sides, we must put on record that the use of nuclear weapons is inconceivable and wholly unacceptable. We counsel against the mere suggestion by anyone. 
we counsel further that space for continued dialogue must remain open. Before I conclude, Mr. President, I would, it will be remiss of me not to express my dismay for the disturbing reports that people of African descent are being singled out to unfair treatment as they join the masses fleeing the Ukrainian territory. In line with international humanitarian law and its guiding principles, we call on all states to uphold their international obligations and ensure the safety of all peoples. In conclusion, Mr. President, St. Vincent and the Grenadines repeats that it is a stout champion of the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter and their primacy in our multilateral system. We must, and I repeat, we must give peace a real chance to succeed. We must stop this war and return to diplomacy. Thank you, and peace profound to all. I thank the distinguished representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Monaco. Monsieur le Président. President of the General Assembly, I wish to recall that the Principality of Monaco endorses the statement made by the European Union yesterday on the 28th of February. I wish to restate from this high rostrum that my country is committed to respect for international law and the UN Charter. In this forum, where each state has one voice, or one vote rather, in line with the principle of sovereign equality enshrined in the Charter, Monaco will use its vote to support Ukraine. Committing to the Charter in good faith resolving disputes through peaceful means, not attacking the territorial integrity of a state, these are the fundamental principles that every member state signs up for in becoming a member of the United Nations. Mr. President, we deplore the increasing number of victims and are gravely concerned that the population has been displaced as they flee violence, as well as being concerned for the more than 600,000 people who are already refugees. The situation is worsening rapidly. Civilians are suffering. And in the face of this, we call for respect for international humanitarian law and recall that the Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols impose a distinction between civilians and combatants and ban using civilians as targets. We call also for unimpeded access for humanitarian assistance. We remain convinced that dialogue based on international law and the principles and values of the Charter are the only way of finding an end to this war that concerns all of us. This may seem trivial, but on the 2nd of December 2021, the General Assembly adopted a resolution on the Olympic truce the Winter Paralympic Games open on the 4th of March 2022 and we condemn the violation of this symbol of friendship and fraternity between peoples. Monaco defends the multilateral system and advocates peace. Monaco co-sponsors the draft resolution entitled Aggression Against Ukraine, which is submitted for the consideration of the General Assembly meeting in an emergency special session. Monaco will vote in favour of this text. I thank the distinguished representative of Monaco.
I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Spain. Señor Presidente. President, Spain uh, upholds uh, and supports the statement uh, of the delegation of the European Union on behalf of the Union and its member states. President, the General Assembly is meeting because the Security Council has been blocked uh, by the veto of the Russian Federation to carry out uh, the tasks uh, of uh, maintenance of peace and peaceful settlement of uh, disputes uh, charged uh, by the Charter. We thank the members of the Security Council who made this special meeting possible, and it is now up to all member states to defend peace, the Charter, and the United Nations. When it exercised its veto, Russia explained that it is doing so to balance the interests of the permanent members of the Council. It is that balance of interests interpreted by just one of the permanent members more important than the principles and values of the Charter? Are all member states of the United Nations equally sovereign, or are some more equal than others, with the right to unilaterally impose their inter interpretation of the Charter? Spain deplores the use of the veto by Russia, which has prevented the adoption of the resolution co-sponsored by 82 member states, including Spain. The veto is an anachronism. We must get rid of it. The defense of an international order based on international law and the principles and values of the Charter cannot be conditioned by the use of the veto. The resolution that this General Assembly is debating, co-sponsored by Spain, has as its objective, the independence and sovereignty of Ukraine, which was invaded by the Russian Federation with the cooperation of Belarus. The defense of peace and the Pacific settle and diplomatic settlement uh, of conflicts, but also the very reason why our multilateral organization, the United Nations, exists. President, Spain roundly condemns the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We acknowledge the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Ukraine in its internationally recognized borders and express our admiration at those who've, who are acting against uh, this war in the Russian Federation. Hours and days have passed since the attack of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, but uh, Ukraine is resisting and continues to resist as the world watches admiringly, well aware of how unequal the struggle is. Every minute of resistance makes the attacker's self-justification vanish into thin air. How can we deny, in the name of uh, an empire overthrown by Russian citizens themselves, the right to the independence of Ukraine at the same time as, as, it, is, as it is being attacked in the name of the independence of the Donbass regions? How can we allege security uh, interests declaring a state of high alert for nuclear tactical forces, which is the greatest threat possible against collective security. As if these reasons were not enough to vote uh, for the resolution uh, presented to the General Assembly, can anybody imagine what hope there would be for a ceasefire and the diplomatic path if this resolution did not have an overwhelming majority? Does anybody believe that uh, contacts would continue without uh, preconditions between the representatives of Ukraine, the Russian Federation, and Gomel. What would it, uh, what w could we put uh, under the aegis of the Charter and of the United Nations when it comes to future negotiations for a collective se security system? Humanitarian action, uh, what moral support would there be for humanitarian assistance to unconditionally help all victims of the, of the war? How would it be funded and protected? What support would there be for the indispensable good offices that Secretary General Guterres uh, offers? Present colleagues, enough of war. We urgently call for an immediate ceasefire and the withdrawal of Russian troops from Ukraine. 
He has returned to the diplomatic path that was open until the Security Council of last uh, February 23rd. Contacts between Ukraine and the Russian Federation must lead to a diplomatic negotiation which, uh, with the good offices of Secretary General Guterres, will lead to the end of a conflict and lasting peace. The resolution we will vote for in this General Assembly, with all of its limitations and uh, uh, virtues, has become a symbol of hope of a future based on multilateralism, the sovereign equality of states, the peaceful settlement of disputes, and peace. It has become a living testimony to the Charter. Let us all vote for it. Thank you. of Spain. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Belize. Mr. President, Excellencies, all members of the United Nations are obligated to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia is a blatant breach of Russia's obligation under the United Nations Charter. It constitutes an unacceptable violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and contravenes Article 2.4 of the UN Charter and the norms and principles of international law. The attack by Russia on the Republic of Ukraine is therefore an attack on the Charter and an attack on the international system. We therefore strongly and inequivocally condemn the Russian illegal attack on Ukraine and its gross violation of international law. Mr. President, we are extremely concerned about the devastating impact that this illegal war is having on the lives of Ukrainians. Already, loss of life, disruption of livelihoods, destruction of property and terror are occurring in the Republic of Ukraine. War leaves permanent cars on society. The impact is being felt especially hard by women and children, the elderly, and persons with disability. A generation of Ukrainians will be lost, and families forever destroyed. Mr. President, we need to consider a situation of war in the 21st century. We all agreed to leave wars behind when the Second World War ended, and the international community created the United Nations Organization to ensure that the peoples of the world would never again suffer the scourge of war. We all agreed to and signed the United Nations Charter and committed to uphold its principles. We created an organization to provide a forum where the tools for peaceful settlement of disputes are available for all member states, a forum where diplomacy and international law should prevail over armed conflict. We remain resolute that all states must respect and adhere to the principle of the Charter of the United Nations and the norms of international law, which are fundamental to the maintenance of international system and peace and security, including respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity within international recognized borders, non-interference in the internal affairs of another state, and the prohibition and the threat or use of force for the resolution of disputes. Mr. President, in unison with the sentiment expressed by others, we call for an immediate cessation of hostilities, the withdrawal of all Russian troops and military hardware from the occupied territories in Ukraine. We urge all sides to res exercise restraint, allow the safe passage of all civilians, comply with international humanitarian law, and to resort to diplomacy to find a solution to this international armed conflict. Belize stands in solidarity with Ukraine and its people who are enduring the tragedy of war. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Belize. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of South Africa.
Mr. President, Excellencies, South Africa remains deeply concerned by the escalation of the conflict in Ukraine. We welcome the commencement of talks between Ukraine and Russia. We hope that these discussions will lead to a diplomatic solution that will result in a sustainable political solution. South Africa is of the view that this armed conflict, like all others, will result in unnecessary human suffering and destruction with global ramifications. In situations of conflict, the most vulnerable tend to suffer the most during and post the conflict. It is regrettable that at the time when the world is struggling to emerge from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, we assist with a conflict that will further delay the world's recovery. The UN Secretary General Guterres reminded us of this when he stated that the conflict will have a huge impact on the global economy in a moment when we are emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic and so many developing countries need to have the space for recovery. The UN was founded after the, many, after the horrors of the Second World War with the aim of saving succeeding generations from the scourge of war. It is for this reason that the Charter of the United Nations enjoins all member states to settle their disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace security and justice are not endangered. Mr. President, we stress that peace is best built through diplomacy and dialogue within the framework of the institutions of global dialogue, especially the United Nations. It is important for all nations to respect and uphold the principles of international law, including international humanitarian law and the provisions of the UN Charter. The UN is now in its 76th year of existence, and the events of the last two weeks have again reminded us of the urgent need to reform the UN, especially the UN Security Council, which is long overdue. We need a council free from the legacy of the Cold War so that it can genuinely be the space where the community of nations come together to resolve conflict and build a more just and peaceful world. Mr. President, South Africa always appreciates the value that dialogue has in averting a crisis and de-escalating conflict. This is in line with our strong commitment to the peaceful resolution of conflict. In this regard, we also urge the Security Council to utilize existing tools at its disposal in support of the Pacific settlements of disputes. We also believe that the good offices of the UN Secretary General could make a positive contribution in finding a lasting solution to this conflict and should be utilized. We urge all parties to approach the situation in a spirit of compromise, with all sides upholding human rights abiding by their obligations under the international law and international humanitarian law. A diplomatic solution to the problem should address the security concerns of the parties. South Africa continues to support and encourage regional initiatives such as the Minsk agreements, and we welcome the work of the Normandy format, the trilateral contact group, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Mr. President, this meeting has been held under the Uniting for Peace formula, which requires the General Assembly to meet if and when the Security Council is unable to act. However, it remains necessary for the Security Council to exercise its responsibility fully in the current situation. The situation in Ukraine should not be allowed, Mr. President, to affect negatively 
other priorities of the international community and the rest of the work of the United Nations. We therefore note with concern that not all situations of conflict have received the same attention. Indeed, while there is this focus on Ukraine, long-standing situations that the Security Council is seized with continue without resolution. It is necessary that we devote equal attention to other long-standing conflicts where the UN Charter and the human rights are being violated. In conclusion, South Africa endorses the statement issued by the African Union Commission expressing concern that the treatment, at the treatment given to African nationals and people of African descent at the borders of Ukraine, some of whom are not allowed to cross and move to safety. We urge European countries to take steps to resolve this situation, as all people have a right to cross international borders during times of conflict. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of South Africa. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Gabon. Mr. President. Mr. President, we are meeting today to send a clear message to the peoples of the world. Our message is that the United Nations are against war. By doing this, we are playing our role. This organization was created to preserve present and future generations from the specter of war. That is the substance behind the first words of the UN Charter. The General Assembly should unambiguously condemn the war against Ukraine. It should condemn all wars entered into by choice, all wars for influence, all wars for hegemony, all wars for resources, all unfair wars and dehumanizing wars. Wherever the security and dignity of the peoples of the world is violated, this General Assembly should make its voice heard with force and with vigor. At the time that we are having this region, weapons are being used in Ukraine, blood is flowing and thousands of innocent civilians, men, women and children are fleeing their houses, their towns and their country to seek refuge elsewhere. Our message as members of the international community should be unequivocal in its rejection of belligerence until the spectre of confrontation recedes and until there is a peaceful resolution of the conflict. We have the duty to offer an alternative to fear. There is still time. There is always time to choose dialogue and diplomacy over force. Gabon is deeply committed to peace. My country is committed to the respect for the territorial integrity and national sovereignty of every member of the United Nations. My country believes in multilateralism, it believes in international solidarity and in an international order based on rules and not on who is the strongest. The United Nations Charter confers all of its relevance and nobility on our organisation and that is why we are calling for an immediate ceasefire and a de-escalation of the conflict. We call on all of the parties to return to dialogue and to privilege diplomatic channels. Mr. President, my country is very concerned by the attacks against civilians and civilian infrastructure. We call on the warring factions to abstain from any use of weapons whose effect is indiscriminate. 
access to humanitarian aid for the population that needs it should be unimpeded and should be given without discrimination. We hail the generosity of neighboring countries around Ukraine who are hosting people fleeing war. Mr. President, here we echo the alarm that has been raised by African students fleeing the war in Ukraine and who are finding discrimination in trying to seek shelter. This situation is unacceptable. We say no to racism and demand the respect of human dignity, calling for the fair treatment of all people in distress. In conclusion, Mr. President, Gabon will support the draft resolution submitted for our consideration. My country supports international peace and security, and we stress the concerning nature of the assaults on our shared values, against which we sometimes feel powerless, and against the selective respect for certain principles of the UN Charter. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Gabon. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cuba. Señor Presidente. President, the government of Cuba last uh, February 26 issued a statement on the events in Ukraine expressing clearly its position for a solution which will guarantee the safety and sovereignty of all concerned and that will respond to legitimate humanitarian concerns. Cuba is a country that defends international law. It is committed to the Charter of the United Nations. Cuba will always defend peace and and ambiguously respond uh, to the threat or use of force against any state. For this reason, we firmly support uh, the proclamation of America, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean as a zone of peace signed by heads of state uh, uh, in Havana in our, for our region in uh, 2014. Cuba is also committed to international humanitarian law, and it calls on all parties to protect the population, their goods, and civilian infrastructure. We deeply deplore the losses of life of innocent civilians in Ukraine. The Cuban people has had and continues to have a close relationship with the people of Ukraine. President. It is not possible to rigorously and honestly analyze the current situation in Ukraine without uh, carefully considering the factors that have led uh, to the use of force and the non-observance of legal principles and international standards. Cuba fully supports uh, these principles which it upholds and considers that they are an indispensable reference, particularly for small countries against hegemony, the abuse of power, and injustice. The United States' determination to continue the progressive expansion of NATO towards the borders of the Russian Federation have led to a scenario with unpredictable scope, but which could ha nevertheless have been avoided. The military movements made by the United States uh, and NATO in recent uh, months are well known uh, in their movement towards uh, regions adjacent uh, to the Russian Federation, preceded by the delivery of modern weapons to Ukraine, which uh, is 
uh, military, the equivalent of a military pincer movement. It was a mistake uh, to ignore the Russian Federation's demands for security guarantees, and it was a mistake uh, to suppose that it would remain uh, inactive uh, in the face of a threat to its national security. It is not possible to achieve peace by surrounding and closing in on states. The responsibility falls to the government of the United States because of its doctrine of an increasingly offensive military policy outside the borders of NATO, which threatens uh, international peace, stability, and security. Our concerns are heightened by the recent decision of NATO to activate for the first time the response force of that military alliance. Cuba rejects the hypocrisy and double standard of these actions. It must be recognized that the United States and NATO in 1999 launched a broad-scale aggression against Yugoslavia, a European country which they broke up at a high cost of lives for their geopolitical purposes whilst ignoring the Charter of the United Nations. The United States and allies have used force on multiple occasions invading sovereign states to trigger regime change and interfering in the internal affairs of other nations that do not bow to their interests of domination and who defend their territorial integrity and independence. They are also responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of civilians, which they describe as collateral damage. Millions of displaced people and vast destruction across the face of our planet as a result of their wars of pillage and plunder. Present, the draft resolution on the situation in Ukraine, which was which was not approved in the Security Council last February 25th, was not seen, was not designed as a real uh, search uh, for solutions to the current crisis. The text submitted to the General Assembly today suffers from the same deficiencies and lack of balance. It does not take into account the legitimate concerns of all parties concerned nor does it acknowledge the responsibility of those who took aggressive actions which precipitated the escalation of this conflict. President, we welcome the opening of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. Dialogue and negotiations, not war, are the only way to resolve this conflict. Cuba will continue advocating a diplomatic situ uh, solution which is serious, constructive, and realistic for the current crisis in Europe through peaceful means that will guarantee the freedom and sovereignty of all, as well as peace, stability, and regional and international stability. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished representative of Cuba. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Samoa. Mr. President, Excellencies, Samoa aligns itself with the statement delivered by Fiji on behalf of the Pacific Island Forum. And I wish to add the following remarks in my national capacity. 
Samoa stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. As a peace-loving and vulnerable small island state, Samoa believes that there are only a few global mechanisms available to safeguard our security, continue existence, and well-being. One of these lies in the maintenance of global peace and the respect for rule-based international order. The preamble of the UN Charter highlights as one of its key raison d'etre of our organization, and I quote, is to save successful generation from the scorch of war and to live in peace with one another as good neighbors. Colleagues, that must be our main focus now as members of the UN family. Samoa is greatly concerned by the invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. Such action is in clear violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine, and inconsistent with the stated principles laid out in Article 2 of the UN Charter. We condemn Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine. Samoa strongly advocates for peace and urge all actors involved to focus their efforts on ensuring an immediate cessation of hostilities, protection of civilian and civilian infrastructure, reframing from actions that may further escalate the dangerous and delicate situation in Ukraine, cease all military operation and return to the barracks, and prioritize diplomacy to defuse tension. The current call by both Ukraine and Russia for peace talk is therefore most welcome. We join the chorus of call by other delegation on Russia to respect the founding principle of the UN Charter, abide by the principle of international law, state sovereignty and territorial integrity, and fully honor the Minsk Agreement as adopted by the Security Council in 2015. Mr. President, Samoa strongly support the statement made by the Secretary General last week and yesterday. Samoa may be a small state, but it is our moral obligation to speak up and to be counted for the principle upon which we have all subscribed to. Let us all give peace a chance and support the UN draft resolution. Samoa will co-sponsor and vote yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative some more. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Philippines. Mr. President, the Philippines will vote yes to the UNGA resolution and expresses explicit condemnation of the invasion of Ukraine. No one can trust news reports of casualties on either side but since 2014, 14,000 have been killed. In the current fog of lies, we have yet to determine the true casualties on both sides. We appeal for the protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure. We strongly urge the cessation of facilities, but while on offense, 
can be stopped at will, the defense cannot rest until it does. We call for massive assistance commensurate with the growing humanitarian crisis and echo the UN Secretary General's appeal for respect of humanitarian principles to protect civilians and civilian infrastructures in Ukraine. Safe access to humanitarian assistance must be assured by the most effective means. The principle of sovereignty and the sovereign equality of states is enshrined in the UN Charter. All states enjoy the right to full sovereignty in all their areas of jurisdiction. The Charter of the United Nations requires sovereign states to refrain from the use of force against the political independence and territorial integrity of any state. We especially condemn the use of separatism and secession as a weapon of diplomacy for inviting and inflicting terrible cruelties and indiscriminate killings, far in excess of that of any other kind of conflict. We saw this in the Balkans and Africa. We strongly urge resort to the 1982 Manila Declaration on the Peaceful Settlement of International Disputes. It will at least halt the ongoing tragedy for a while. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Philippines. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cabo Verde. The government of Cabo Verde has been following with deep and growing concern the unfolding developments in Ukraine as of February 24th, since the beginning of the military invasion of Russia, pursuing the recognition of two Ukrainian regions. In fact, we are witnessing an escalate leading to the worst and dangerous scenario of an urban guerrilla in the big cities in Ukraine, predicting uh, high death tolls, fracturing societies, and grooming a postponed future of a generation. Cabo Verde commends the convenience of this GA, giving to all members the possibility to position vis-a-vis -vis the intensification of this senseless and fratricide war. This is a defying and pivotal moment for UN and for humanity. Thus, we praise the initiatives of the Secretary General and some member states on humanitarian aid and urge for an immediate launch of the operations in the field in order to save lives, especially of the more vulnerable, the fleeing people and the refugees to whom basic human rights rights are defaulting. We commend the efforts of the neighboring countries and urge them to facilitate the entry of all citizens fleeing from Ukraine. We are facing a scenario that represents the biggest global challenge and threat to international peace and security that calls into question the security and well-being of the vulnerable civilian people which is already triggering political, economic, and social consequences, not only in Eastern Europe, but also in the rest of the world. Mr. President, Cabo Verde inequivocally condemns the recourse of th to threat or the use of force in the relations between states and pledges for the respect of the values and the international law enshrined in the United Nations Charter. In this regard, it reiterates the need to observe the principles of sovereign equality, territorial integrity, 
and unviolability of the states. So let's not fail tackling this serious challenge to multilateralism and prompt a response aiming to stop and revert the situation, honoring the universality of the UN Charter. Being a small island developing state, Cabo Verde attaches paramount importance to the strict, strict observance of the Charter's principles and content. It is existential for us, a safeguard for international peace and security, instrumental in the context of ongoing multidimensional crisis at the outset of the decade of action, already with a pandemic-induced setback in the dynamic of implementation of the Agenda 2030, hampering and putting in risk the consistency of the ongoing timid global recovery trend. On this basis, we firmly believe that no effort should be spared to an immediate ceasefire, as well as to seek a diplomatic way out through dialogue and negotiations for conflict resolution under the provisions of Minsk Agreement in coherence with the Resolution 2202 of the Security Council. The, I, the ongoing direct talks at the Belarusian border, although late, comes at the right direction. We are shocked by what's happening in Ukraine. We band ourselves in face of the heroism of the Ukrainian people, to whom we present our condolences. On the other hand, being a long-standing friend of Russia, we have to beg her to stop the killing of innocent people. Хватит! Давайте прекратить эту войну бессмысленную. Let's stop this war. That's enough. Peace to prevail. Cabo Verde will vote for the resolution. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the distinguished representative of Cabo Verde. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Hungary. Mr. President, Excellencies, dear colleagues, while we align ourselves with the statement delivered by the European Union, I wish to make the following remarks in my national capacity. Mr. President, Hungary reaffirms its unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. The UN Charter is clear. It unequivocally prohibits the use of force against the territorial integrity and political independence of states, and also urges that states settle their international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered. We subscribe to the message delivered by the Secretary General on this issue, that the decision of the Russian Federation is a violation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine and inconsistent with the principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Mr. President, Hungary condemns Russia's military intervention against Ukraine and the serious escalation we all witnessed during last week, including the threat to use nuclear weapons. Hungary condemns the recognition of the non-governmental controlled areas of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts of Ukraine as independent entities and the subsequent decision to send Russian troops into Ukraine. This aggression against the sovereign UN member state is deeply concerning as this illegal act 
further undermines Ukraine's sovereignty and independence and is a severe breach of international law and international agreements. War is the worst possible scenario, which we hoped to never have to experience again in our neighborhood. We regret that the diplomatic efforts failed to bring a peaceful conclusion of the tensions. Peace and stability is threatened in Europe and worldwide. What is happening in Ukraine affects the security of each and every UN member state. In this situation, we need strategic calmness. We have to avoid actions that further escalate the already dire situation. Mr. President, as for Hungary, the war in our neighboring country is a great security risk. Therefore, we are interested in achieving a peaceful conclusion to this conflict, and we have to also preserve channels of communication in order to maintain the chance for negotiations. Hungary as a Central European country is genuinely interested in East-West dialogue. In our region has always suffered as a consequence of conflict between the power struggle of the powerful nations. We have not forgotten the experience of the Cold War. We welcome news of direct negotiations between the parties and hope that they may lead to a restoration of peace in our neighborhood. We strongly support EU and NATO unity on this issue and support our joint responses to the situation. Hungary underlines its support for the existing international frameworks for the sustainable and peaceful resolution of conflicts in accordance with international law and in particular with the OSC commitments. Hungary also expresses its support for the valuable engagement of the OSCE special monitoring mission and its tremendous efforts of gathering and reporting facts in an extremely challenging situation. Mr. President, in response to the evolving humanitarian crisis, Hungary is ready and fully mobilized to receive refugees who need help or shelter during the ongoing aggression. Our embassies are open and we are operating our border crossing stations with full capacity. Many third countries have requested help from us in evacuating their citizens. We have allowed entrance for all people fleeing from war without any restrictions and without discrimination as to race, ethnicity, religion, or country of origin. We affirm that all cases of discrimination will be thoroughly investigated and perpetrators held accountable. We have established a humanitarian corridor in order to facilitate the entrance of the citizens of these countries to Hungary without a visa, and then we help them make their way to the nearest airport from where they can safely return to their home countries. Mr. President, even though the situation on the ground is deeply worrying, we believe that there is a diplomatic solution to this conflict. To that end, we urge for the immediate cessation of all hostilities and the resumption of negotiations. I reiterate the proposal made by the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Mr. Peter Sijarto, to offer Budapest, Hungary's capital, as a venue for such diplomatic efforts. We hope that the parties accept this invitation and participate in talks with good faith and a willingness to peacefully resolve the crisis and end the war. To conclude, Mr. President, Hungary is deeply worried by the war that is occurring in our neighboring country. We are also worried that it may have security, humanitarian, political, and economic ramifications on a global scale. Hungary again reaffirms her unwavering support for Ukraine's territorial integrity, political independence, and sovereignty. Let me reiterate once again our firm belief that tensions and disagreements must be resolved through dialogue and diplomacy, especially in a conflict of this scale. The resolution is not about taking side. It is about upholding the principles of the UN Charter. It is about peace. Hungary will vote yes on this resolution and encourage you all to do the same. I thank you.
I thank the distinguished representative of Hungary. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malta. Mr. President, Malta fully aligns itself with the statement delivered by the European Union and would like to make some additional remarks in its national capacity. Malta reiterates its unwavering support for the sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. We express our heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims who have lost their lives because of this unprovoked war by the Russian Federation, which we strongly condemn. This decision is illegal and unacceptable. It is a violation of international law. It is a violation of the UN Charter. It is a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. It is a violation of Russia's own international commitments. Mr. President, Malta fully agrees with the Secretary General's view that this military offensive is a repudiation of the principles of the UN Charter. The foundations of the UN rest on the sovereignty and independence of states principles that we have all agreed to and that we all depend upon. Threats to the territorial integrity of states and international law are not confined to one region, but have ramifications for the security of all countries. Last week, Malta joined a group of over 80 countries to co-sponsor a resolution tabled by the United States and Albania condemning the Russian Federation for its aggression and calling on it to end its offensive. Regrettably, the Security Council was not able to fulfill its duty because a permanent member vetoed the resolution. Even more disturbing is the fact that the permanent member casting the veto is also the aggressor. Mr. President, this war has already had a devastating impact on the lives of civilians. We stress that international humanitarian law must be respected at all times and that the protection of civilians is a fundamental principle. We also call for the facilitation of rapid, safe and unhindered humanitarian assistance to those in need. Malta calls for the immediate withdrawal of Russian forces from Ukraine and emphasizes the need to avoid a dangerous escalation in Europe. It is never too late for diplomacy. We underline once again the serious breaches of the UN Charter are a matter of global concern and as such we hope the General Assembly will send a unanimous signal to the world by defending the very principles on which these United Nations were built and underlining the sovereignty and independence of all member states. Malta will never accept a situation where might is right. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Malta. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malaysia. Mr. President, Malaysia is seriously con concerned over the escalation of military conflict in Ukraine. Malaysia regrets the inability of the Security Council in exercising its primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. Hence, the necessity of this emergency special session of the UN General Assembly. 
We are at a crossroad and we understand the legitimate security concerns of all parties. Nevertheless, in any circumstances, all parties must abide and respect the principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states as enshrined in the UN Charter and international law. Any violation of this sacrosanct principle is unacceptable. It is clear that in conflict situations, no solutions can be found at the end of the barrel of a gun. At this critical juncture, we call on all parties to exercise restraint, take concrete steps to de-escalate, and pursue dialogue to resolve the conflict peacefully. Malaysia therefore welcomes the direct talks between Ukraine and Russia in Belarus yesterday. We hope that the talks will continue and bring about a speedy resolution to the conflict to prevent further loss of lives and devastation. Malaysia also calls on all parties to refrain from taking unilateral actions that may aggravate tensions and have far-reaching regional and global consequences. We are also deeply concerned on reports about nuclear arsenals being put on high alert status. We call on all nuclear weapon states to adhere to their joint statement of 3rd January 2022 on preventing nuclear war and avoiding arms races. Malaysia fully supports the affirmation that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We further urge nuclear weapon states to pursue actions towards the alerting risk reduction and to implement their commitments and obligations related to nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. With the dire situation on the ground, Malaysia urges all parties to ensure the protection and well-being of the people, in particular women, children, and other vulnerable segments of society. This must also be our immediate priority. In this context, we call on all parties to respect the relevant provisions of international humanitarian and human rights laws. Mr. President, Malaysia is also speaking today, having suffered the consequences of the conflict in Ukraine with the downing of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH17 eight years ago. 298 innocent lives were lost in that tragedy. We continue to remember and mourn them. We will also continue joint efforts with our partners to seek justice and accountability in accordance with the rule of law and in line with the UN Security Council Resolution 2166 of 2014. Conclusion, Malaysia reiterates our commitment to the peaceful settlement of dispute guided by the principle enshrined in the UN Charter and international law in the interest of maintaining regional and international peace and security, as well as promoting greater prosperity. In this connection, Malaysia will vote in favour of the draft resolution, which is now before the Assembly. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Malaysia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kuwait. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, Mr. President, the General Assembly today is discussing the matter of the Security Council inability to discharge its duty to maintain peace and security in Europe and in the world. The multilateral international system based on the respect for international law and the UN Charter is passing through a delicate stage 
which represents a real test for the United Nations to defend the values and principles on which it was founded for more, more than 76 years ago. The uh, developing unfolding situation in Ukraine led to uh, the uh, killing and injury of uh, hundreds of peoples as well as the displacement of uh, so many others uh, require of us uh, taking uh, a steadfast and immediate stand uh, to resolve disputes by peaceful means. We uh, hail here the uh, negotiations held yesterday between Russia and Ukraine in uh, Belarus uh, as a glimmer of hope, and we hope this will be followed by other sessions that will lead to peaceful settlement of that uh, conflict. Kuwait, as a small country, given our uh, painful experience in 1991, uh, occupied at the time, uh, it upholds its principled positions to abide by international law and the UN Charter, which represent safe haven for small states to maintain their sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence, embodying the uh, concept of collective security. From this perspective, we categorically reject the use or the threat of use of force in uh, relations among states, and we abide by the UN Charter and its principles that govern and regulate relations among states based on respect for their sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence in a, within their internationally uh, recognized uh, borders, non-interference in their internal affairs, and solving conflicts by peaceful means. Here we would like to reiterate uh, our uh, uh, support for the territorial integrity and sovereignty of uh, and independence of uh, Ukraine, we call upon the parties uh, to abide by uh, uh, Resolution 2022 of the Security Council and end uh, the crisis uh, ceasefire to uh, save uh, uh, lives and uh, to uh, abide by restraint and uh, to solve uh, problems by peaceful means. While we express our grave concern over the deteriorating situation and our fear that uh, more deterioration will follow. We uh, appeal to all parties uh, to respect their commitments by virtue of uh, humanitarian international law and human uh, rights law, as well as relevant Security Council resolutions that call for defending uh, the uh, civilian population and uh, uh, installations. We recall uh, Security Council uh, Resolution 2472 that uh, was adopted in 2019 to uh, protect the civilians. We hope this uh, resolution, uh, this humanitarian resolution, uh, will be applied. It calls upon all the parties uh, to uh, look for the uh, missing persons in a manner that uh, will uh, help reach out to the uh, grieved families. We uh, support all the efforts made by the uh, Secretary General and the specialized agencies as well as regional uh, organizations uh, to de-escalate the situation. And we call for facilitating the delivery of humanitarian assistance to the civilians without any restrictions in accordance with humanitarian uh, commitments enshrined in relevant international uh, instruments. Thank you, Mr. President. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malawi.
Mr. President, Excellencies, may I first of all send condolences to the families that have lost their loved ones in the Ukraine crisis. Mr. President, Malawi takes note the resolution tabled on Ukraine crisis and are co-sponsoring it. We note with great concern the worsening situation that has already created grave human suffering in Ukraine. Malawi would like to commend all member states for their contribution and commitment towards a negotiated diplomatic solution to the crisis. As a peace-loving country, Malawi reaffirms her commitment to global peace and security and condemns any escalation of hostilities that threaten this common cause. We therefore take this opportunity to reiterate our commitment and support towards a peaceful resolution of this crisis, more so now when the global community is focused on fighting the COVID-19 crisis and other humanitarian crises. Mr. President, the establishment and survival of the United Nations, as we know it today, is largely due to our shared commitment towards global peace and security. Any threats towards peace and security are equally a threat to the very foundation of this organization and a threat to the progress we have attained over the years to make the world peaceful and safer for humanity and all forms of life on it. The progress that has been realized in building the global peace and security architecture should be jealously guarded by all of us. In the same vein, the sanctity, territorial integrity, and sovereignty of all UN member states must be respected and protected. The territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine is no exception. We are all aware of the consequences of a global conflict and its humanitarian, socioeconomic, and political catastrophic impacts, which are needless to ever overemphasize. Mr. President, the world is already grappling with a number of other existential crises, ranging from the COVID-19 pandemic and let alone climate change. Malawi, therefore, commends the restraint shown so far by various stakeholders in the crisis and appeals for the de-escalation of the tension. We call on Russia to immediately cease fire and withdraw its forces, including its military equipment from Ukraine in order to create conditions necessary for continued diplomatic engagement, peace negotiations, and contact and dialogue for the good of humanity. The current crisis in Ukraine demands a demonstration of leadership by the UN Security Council and all members of the United Nations in a true spirit of multilateralism. Let us give dialogue and peace negotiations a chance. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Malawi. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Marshall Islands.
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies. I align my statement with that of Fiji, a chair of the Pacific Island Forum states. And I speak also on my own capacity as PR Marshall Islands to the UN. The Republic of the Marshall Islands welcome this opportunity for the UN General Assembly to convene a special emergency session on the General Assembly Resolution 377A. This resolution, known as Uniting for Peace, was established in 1950 to take immediate action when there is a lack of unanimity among the Security Council's five permanent five members on protecting international peace and security. And never has the United Nations General Assembly been needed more than to correct the blatant self-interest of Russia's veto of Security Council draft resolution S slash 2022 slash 155. Mr. President, the complete military invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation is without any rational justification under international law and is little more than a ruse to satisfy an imperialist agenda. Free will and the rule of law are being overruled by the barrel of a gun, sadly held by one of us, sadly one of the founding members of this UN family, Russia. Free will, the basic sovereignty, and the democratic expression of Ukraine is at direct state, stake. Every democratic country in the world should be concerned because an unlawful invasion of one of us is truly, Mr. President, an unlawful invasion of all of us. And the Marshall Islands will not stay silent. We will call out this unprovoked and violent invasion for exactly what it is, tyranny. The UN Charter is very clear, and the GA is thereafter charged with expressing accountability for the immediate situation. If we, as the United Nations, cannot take action, then as an institution, like the long ago League of Nations, we risk our very relevance. But mere words or outcry alone will not change the course of events. As a small nation, the Republic of the Marshall Islands condemned the recent invasion and urges all full accountability to be established. And we will play our own part in joining partnership, respond measures to counter Russian aggression. Small or large, we must all stand in solidarity to uphold basic human rights and the rule of law, including those from multilateral consequences. Our population is small, but our voice can be very loud. As with many other small nations, the UN is our primary platform. And as with many others in this room, our own history as a people is marked, marked by the last global conflict. For Marshall Island, it has taught us a valuable lesson, lesson to achieve and preserve democratic independence and to ensure our voice is heard directly. Dear colleague, as it was repeated by so many other speakers, that is important to speak out. We must all speak out when we see such flagrant wrongs in the world. Because if we do fail now, who then will speak up for us or our neighbors in future threats. In just a fragile region as ours, also facing geopolitical competition, we are closely concerned over the adequacy of multilateral response towards Ukraine. So while 
this invasion poses a challenge, we are also optimistic that many nations have spoken out and that many more will do so. Mr. President, Excellencies, a veto is and will not, will not stop global consensus. And Ukraine, you have a friend in the Marshall Islands. You are not alone. Remain strong. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Marshall Islands. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Israel. Mr. President, Israel is a country that has experienced many wars and therefore knows firsthand that war is not the way to resolve conflicts. War sows destruction chaos and tragedy, not a brighter future. The Russian attack on Ukraine is a serious violation of the international order. We have condemned it and we call upon Russia to heed the calls of the international community to stop the attack and respect the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. Israel has long-standing and positive relations with both Russia and Ukraine. Given our deep ties with both sides, we're willing to contribute to the diplomatic efforts if so requested, and have been trying to do so in the last couple of weeks. Israel expresses its concern for the safety of the people of Ukraine, including the numerous Israeli citizens living there and the sizable Jewish communities in the affected areas. We are gravely concerned by the growing humanitarian crisis. In that regard, Israel is providing 100 tons of humanitarian assistance to the people of Ukraine, including medical supplies, water purification systems, emergency water supply kits, and winter gear. We are calling upon the parties to facilitate humanitarian access. Mr. President, let me conclude by echoing the call of the Secretary General to turn to the path of dialogue and peace and to resolve this crisis through peaceful means in accordance with the principles of the UN Charter. I will end with the words of the prophet Isaiah, which express in this context and beyond my government's prayers, and I would hope the praise of all those sitting in this hall. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Israel. We have heard the last speaker in the debate on this item for this meeting. We shall hear the remaining speakers this afternoon in this hall at 3 p.m. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>